Okay, uh, thank you for uh, the introduction. And I'm gonna give you a short lecture uh, called mock lecture. And uh, let me start my slide. Okay, and I, I chose the title, uh, what is sustainable development? And which is a really big theme, uh, but uh, today, uh, so I'm gonna focus on social uh, aspects of a uh, sustainable development question. Uh, let me, sorry, yep. And so here are some questions uh, we explore today. Uh, what kinds of environmental pressure uh, human activities are causing uh, globally, and why do we still need development, and how is the concept of sustainable development uh, discussed in international policymaking? And these questions are, are really big, uh, and uh, I'm not give you uh, answers uh, to these questions, but uh, this is the opportunity, so I take advantage of this opportunity to, opportunity to invite you to think about these questions uh, which are very important and also urgent as you realize okay um, maybe you have heard uh, such stories uh, you know the, the expansion of human activities over the last few centuries uh, so world population uh, is growing and carbon dioxide emissions are growing and also you know some um, uh, so features reflecting uh, human activities like fertilizer consumptions or uh, marine capture, uh, uh, fish capture. And uh, so already, so humans are putting a lot of pressure uh, on the ecosystems and the uh, earth. And uh, so almost the half uh, of the uh, arable land is already used for human use and water, uh, drinking water, uh, fresh water, and also marine fish. And uh, uh, so now scientists uh, figure out, uh, so there are certain areas uh, where are uh, already in kind of dangerous zone in terms of environmental issues. Uh, for example, biodiversity uh, and also uh, some uh, uh, types of pollutions like nitrogen. So uh, this is a reflection of, of course, of course uh, global population trends. And uh, let's look at uh, so the pop human population trend after uh, year zero, yeah. And uh, human population. So this is a very interesting question to you know how to estimate uh, human population, but uh, it's it's possible uh, by using uh, many uh, data. And uh, so you see the trend. So you know it's going upward. And this trend is actually not an uh, exponential trend. So you might heard of exponential trend, uh, which is, uh, which means you know, so um, a population or uh, the amount doubles uh, every certain period. But uh, it, this pattern is called super exponential, and it's more than that. And you see that. And uh, for example, uh, so you see, you know, so the population uh, uh, doubled uh, from uh, 5 million to 1 billion over 300 years, uh, but 1 billion to 2 billion, only 130 years, and 2 billion to 4 billion, uh, so only 34 years. So it's a super exponential trend. So, uh, but the right now, you know, so population trend, um, so there's a lot of heterogeneity, and you might, you know, so yeah, some of the, uh, uh, so in the regions you uh, live, for, for example, Eastern Asia and Europe, uh, you know, so a population trend uh, is not really kind of, you know, uh, exponential, super exponential trend. Uh, it's growing, maybe growing, but uh, uh, not that much. And so altogether, uh, world population uh, is still increasing. Uh, so this is a, a, a population estimate by the United Nations. And uh, so it's, it says, you know, so uh, population um, uh, will increase, uh, not, not uh, a super exponential rate, but still increase and easily uh, go up to, you know, so go over uh, 10 billion uh, people um, uh, during this century. And uh, so now uh, the question uh, is, uh, so how about, you know, so population is increasing, but how about economic conditions? And this is a very interesting question. So uh, I'm an economist and very interested in this kind of you know, evaluation. 
And is it possible uh, to estimate actually uh, world uh, kind of production economic output uh, um, for many years? And it's possible to do it for, uh, for example, year zero. And uh, some economists called uh, Madison uh, uh, just did that. And uh, his data shows, you know, that trend is actually similar uh, to uh, the population trend. And this is a word, uh, uh, gross world product per capita, you know, so per person. And uh, so we are getting, uh, uh, you know, richer and richer over the years on average. Yeah. And uh, so this is a very interesting question. So evaluation is a very interesting question because, you know, so we didn't have any statistics uh, for the year zero or 1000, you know, so um, uh, how would you do that, you know, estimation? And, uh, but we have plenty of data, uh, for example, agricultural production or tax revenues, you know, some uh, states are very good at uh, record keeping on tax revenues or trade activities, so, you know, between um, um, the, the two sides of the Atlantic, so North America and Europe, for example. And uh, so estimate the physical quantities of goods production at each period and, uh, you know, and uh, multiply them by the effective prices. And then we get, uh, you know, so a, a rough uh, estimate of world uh, gross product. And, um, um, and, so, and it shows, you know, so world gross product per capita. So that's kind of a bottom. So uh, what is that, you know? Um, so that's a kind of, uh, it shows some kind of basic uh, so consumption level uh, that is needed for basic human survival. So uh, not zero, it, it, we didn't start, start uh, from zero, but uh, there's some level. So we started. So uh, there's um, so uh, why you know so we examine the economic conditions, but uh, why we need to care about economic conditions, you know, so all about so the the, the money question. So, but the money is only means, right? So not the end. And uh, so, but the uh, world as a whole, so we care about the economic conditions and the why. And this is a very you know, um, uh, important question uh, that has been discussed for many, many years, uh, thousands of years. And for example, uh, you know, so we get, uh, so we, yeah, so I, as I said, uh, I cannot give you a conclusive answer to that question. But uh, for example, uh, Aristotle, so um, uh, it gives us a very good hint. So uh, according to Aristotle, Happiness is some kind of study or contemplation. So exactly what you're, you know, so doing right now, study. Um, and, uh, but, you know, so uh, since we are not God, so we, uh, we are physical existence. So we need to be fed and we need to be clothed and we need some shelter. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's basic, our basic conditions, right? So uh, we need certain um, um, fulfillment, fulfillment of material well-being. So uh, let's get back to the actual, you know, so actual world, uh, actual world situation. And uh, so whether, you know, so we are, all of us are fed and clothed uh, or have shelter. And it's not the case, actually. And substantial proportion of the global population uh, is estimated to be so-called under extreme poverty, uh, so uh, characterized by chronic hunger or lack of access to healthcare and safe drinking water, uh, unable to afford education for children and lacking shelter with basic functions. And uh, one question, economic question, is how many people uh, roughly are under these situations? And uh, so it's it's. Uh, Oh, of course, very, very hard question, uh, but uh, so um, economists often do some benchmark, some use uh, some benchmark uh, for this evaluation. And um, uh, so it's, it's often called $1 per day. Uh, so, so meaning that, you know, if uh, your effective income is less than $1, so you could say, you know, you cannot meet uh, these conditions probably. And uh, so, but there's an inflation price changes over the years. So uh, now, so income uh, level threshold is set at uh, $1.90. 
per day. So, um, and uh, so economists are doing, have been doing estimations uh, about uh, uh, people under extreme poverty. And uh, this is the data, uh, so made by uh, the World Bank uh, and the international uh, organization. And uh, this graph uh, started uh, in 1990, the year 1990, and uh, to the present. And the global, global poverty rate uh, with uh, $1.90 threshold. Uh, so the ratio of the uh, uh, people uh, under extreme poverty is actually, uh, you know, so uh, over 35% uh, in the year 1990. Uh, but uh, we have made uh, tremendous progress uh, in terms of poverty reduction. And uh, now the ratio is uh, 10%, about 10%, but still, you know, I would say it's high, yeah? So uh, about 10% of people still lack uh, these things, uh, you know, approximately. And uh, so the, since the number, of, uh, so the global population right now is about 8 billion. Uh, so that, you know, so like seven, uh, eight, uh, 700 to 800 people, a uh, million people are still under poverty with this uh, benchmark. Um, so uh, now, so latest, you know, situation we have uh, is uh, COVID-19. Yeah, so we had uh, tremendous progress in poverty reduction, but how about the impact of COVID-19 on global poverty? And uh, there's some estimate, uh, so again, made by the World Bank. And uh, so it's likely to, you know, uh, global poverty population uh, with a $1.90 uh, dollars per threshold uh, is, is expected to grow. Yeah, so, um, so it has some toll, um, uh, quite a large toll uh, of COVID-19 uh, on global, po global poverty. So now, um, so, so we need some, you know, uh, fulfillment, fulfillment of material well-being, and um, but while you know, but at the same time, so there are some uh, important set of global environmental issues. So how should we? do so with them. So that's, that's the basis of the discussion uh, of the United Nations uh, uh, in terms of uh, sustainable development goals, uh, SDGs. You might have heard of it. Heard of it. So uh, what is SDGs? So it's adopted in uh, 2015 uh, by the United Nations and the goals until 2030. And uh, so it sets various goals uh, related to the conventional development agenda, such like uh, poverty reduction, health and gender issues, uh, but also many goals uh, on the environment. And uh, so we, we need to achieve both the progress in economic conditions and environmental protection. So that's the basic idea. And uh, so, uh, so there are 17 goals and some of them deal with, you know, so, uh, economic conditions like hunger, poverty, uh, but uh, some of them are about the environment, you know, like a, um, like climate or uh, life on land. So, um, so the idea is both both are important. So, uh, uh, so how you know? So th this um, uh, how did this idea uh, come about? So that was uh, formulated by somebody. Yeah. Um, so uh, specifically, so uh, first, you know, so as far as I know, so the first time occasion uh, the word uh, sustainable development was used uh, is uh, this report published in 1980. And it says human beings in the quest for economic development and enjoyment of riches of nature must come to terms uh, with the reality of resource limitation and the carrying capacities of ecosystems must take account of the needs of future generations. So, um, yeah, so we need to care, you know, economic development uh, is one thing, but we need to uh, care about the future generations. So that's, that's uh, you know, so, and we need to balance that, achieve both. And uh, uh, so this is more um, uh, popular and well uh, recognized report uh, published by the United Nations. Uh, so in 1987, uh, it's uh, called a uh, Brundtland report. Brundtland is the name of person uh, who chaired uh, the committee. And uh, so this is a famous uh, definition 
of sustainable development. So sustainable development uh, is development that meets the needs of the present uh, without compromising uh, the ability of future generations uh, to meet uh, their own needs. So, but the, the question is, um, is sustainable development possible? Yeah. Um, so, and this is a very big question. And uh, some people uh, say, you know, it's not possible. So we need to, uh, so in, in order to protect the environment, uh, we need to sacrifice growth. We need to stop growth. Or the, uh, so there, there is a, the, uh, the other type of people uh, says, you know, so uh, it's easily, you know, uh, could be balanced. And uh, again, so I, I'm not going to you to uh, go, going to give you a, a conclusive answer to that question. It's a very broad and complex question. Uh, but uh, uh, this time uh, now, I, I give you some hint about how to think about this question. And uh, so uh, Japan uh, actually gives you uh, some hint about how to think about this question. And uh, so you might have, you know, so I, I saw uh, some news story uh, last few days about the uh, um, uh, haze uh, in Beijing. So it's very, you know, serious uh, now. Uh, but uh, uh, so cityscape is Tokyo, so this city. So uh, we had uh, many uh, um, haze events uh, uh, in the 1960s. But somehow uh, that's, that problem uh, was resolved. So, you know, by the, night, by the year 1995, uh, the, the sky was pretty clear. So, um, and that was made uh, by something, you know, so in the combination of uh, some measures, uh, regulation, uh, but also installment of uh, introduction of some technologies. And uh, so indeed, uh, so I, I'm going to show some graphs. Uh, so the, the top uh, upper graph uh, is average concentrations of as one uh, pollutant, major pollutant, uh, sulfur dioxide uh, in Japan, concentrations of sulfur dioxide in Japan. And uh, so it starts, uh, so 1972, and it was quite high. And now, you know, so it's, it's quite negligible. And so uh, the, during that time, uh, so Japan uh, achieved us, uh, economic growth as well. So uh, in this sense, so we kind of achieved, uh, at least in terms of reduction of certain pollutants. So we balanced economic growth and uh, environmental production. Uh, but uh, look at, you know, so different aspects of the environment. Uh, we've not, we are not, we've been not so successful. Uh, so that, that lower graph uh, is Japanese uh, greenhouse gases emissions since 1990. And uh, that trend uh, is, you know, so almost uh, uh, stays flat, yeah? So there's no clear trend. So, um, so we are not successful and uh, we are still on the way to, you know, so balance uh, so economic uh, maintaining at least maintaining uh, economic conditions uh, and uh, achieve you know certain uh, uh, improvement of certain aspects of uh, the environment so uh, so that's 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 um, you know so I wanted to um, um, say today so and uh, so again you realized you know so these were not questions not, not answers uh, but uh, so this is an opportunity. So again, so uh, as I said, so I would I, I would I, I would like to you know invite you uh, to uh, think about these questions. Okay, so it's now time to uh, move on to uh, the questions and answers. And uh, yeah, um, so I cannot answer all uh, the questions, but but I, I pick uh, some questions and uh, answers. Uh, let me. Ah, so that's, uh, I got a very interesting question. Why were greenhouse gas emissions abnormally low in 2019? Very good point. So greenhouse gas emissions are related to, closely related to economic activities 
And what happened in 2009 is economic crisis, and that reduced uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So uh, it's very uh, closely linked uh, to economic activities, and that's why you know, so reducing greenhouse gas emissions is quite uh, difficult. And uh, it's, um, uh, another question I, I got is, does the transitioning of the economy of Japan to sustainable development cause its stagnation of its growth? Um, I wouldn't say so. Yeah, so that's a you know interesting perspective, but uh, I I don't, wouldn't say so. Um, you know, so uh, as I showed, you know, so some uh, in some aspects uh, we achieved uh, uh, balancing economic growth and uh, um, and um, um, so yeah, improvement uh, in the in the environment, um, and also um, you know so. In some ways, um, uh, focusing on environmental um, protection is beneficial uh, for business. So we create, is managed, we managed to create certain businesses, uh, you know, so and export uh, products, um, um, environmental friendly products uh, to um, you know so other countries, and we so you know so in that sense, uh, somewhat uh, compatible. Yeah, uh, and uh, different questions. Uh, um, another another question so about Japan. Uh, what about the effect in the economy of the society of Japan because of the Fukushima Daiichi reactor disaster? So. Um, yeah, so I, I don't have you know uh, statistical data at hand, but uh, it had some um, impact on on economic activity and um, um, and the society as well. And um, so that some uh, macroeconomic impact and uh, related to the um, you know so environment question. Um, so Fukushima Daiichi uh, nuclear disaster affected the energy system of Japan, and that has really a big impact on economic activities. So energy system uh, is um, really fundamental factor to support uh, economic activities. And uh, if you know, some um, uh, the, the energy system is damaged, uh, it affects uh, the economy quite broadly. Uh, yeah, and the final question, uh, what is the best source of energy for sustainability? Uh, so that's an uh, interesting question. Um, you know, so it's not um, limited to economic questions and that you need to think about, uh, you know, so broad aspects of the question. Uh, but uh, so I, I uh, didn't have time to mention that, but now uh, it's an expansion of uh, renewable energies. Uh, like uh, wind energy and solar energy. And so these are not um, expensive anymore. And um, it at least, you know, so it doesn't uh, produce uh, carbon dioxide emissions. So, uh, uh, and it could be, um, you know, so um, exploited uh, further. So, uh, so that's, that's gives some scope for expansion. And maybe that's, that's about time. Okay, um, yeah, uh, thank you very much. And uh, so uh, I'll conclude uh, this lecture. Thank you very much, Dr. Narita.